Funny thing is, I've always had a knack for attending haunted old schools ever since middle school. So I joined the paranormal club at my school and today was our first investigation. Our school is pretty old, like not as old as East Coast schools, but still a good century old. The building we were investigating was a recently renovated one replacing a very old building that, like all other stories, had people die in. It's a simple lecture hall, but it's pretty infamous for janitors and others workers demanding to relocate because of creepy stuff like a mop dancing by itself or seeing a dark figure at the end of the hall and whatnot. You see, they did this investigation here along with Scrabble pieces, Ouija boards, and other seances and got a response spelling Black Dog, which is an omen of death. Supposedly, if you see a black dog apparition and gaze into its red eyes, you or a person you love will die within a week. Well, obviously no one died. One person did dream of a black dog and saw the reflection, but not directly of its amber eyes, which the next day he got a call saying his baby brother has almost died when two bees stung right under his eye. But this was last year. Besides this, they didn't have much activity on the EMF or EPV going on other than asking yes or no questions, which they answered as all yeses. This hyped me up a little bit for my first investigation and after the initial tour of the building at 1am, we camped out until around 3.30am for the witching hour, but activity started much before in intense waves. The earlier group who went in around 7pm reported they got growled at during an EVP session. The group right after at around midnight reported the first big sighting of the day which was a blood-curdling scream heard by both teams on the second and third floor. Our leader mentioned that on the second floor window, he detected intense waves of EMF around 1.90 of, I forgot the units, which is high as even 0.1 is considered intense and had red beeping all over the place, and suddenly saw a clear head of a woman peering through but it was pretty high up. My time slot was 1 to 3 a.m., so hearing all these made me excited as things are actually happening. So we go to one of the most haunted locations, which is right next to the third floor lobby, where they laid out the Scrabble pieces. There was a long waiting of getting the EMF to detect anything when, all of a sudden, a large spike occurred, and being an amateur, my questions that I asked the spirit was jumbled and incoherent, sadly, but I don't believe I angered them. The spirits we saw explained by our leader were most likely ill-hearted as they were most likely old spirits from the tens or twenties who were extremely racist and homophobic so anyone who wasn't a straight white person would get growled at or have the EMF go crazy on when holding. However, it does not have enough power to curse or follow us as we disinvited them from doing so. The craziest thing is that the group on the other side of the third floor had a spike but asked them if they'd rather talk to people, us on the other side, and as soon as they said no, their EMF went back to zero while it was us who got the spike. A physical sighting occurred three times, including the head of the woman peering through the window. We had another report that when reaching the first floor again, in one of the seats, a girl with fading hair just sat there cross-legged who wasn't part of the group, but when looking back, no one was there. Another reported the same looking girl in the third floor sitting at a dark conference room all by herself until she vanished again. The biggest sighting was someone who saw the whole figure standing and walking away, unable to follow. The scream resulted right after. One more thing I'd like to say is that they heard footsteps on top while on the third floor but there were no more floors, just a roof and supposedly one person saw the elevator sign say 4 while 3 was the highest it could possibly physically go, not some hidden access floor. Thankfully, I was able to return safely in signs of no spirits lingering, and I'm glad to have had this experience. While sadly I wasn't able to witness any physical sightings or the scream, I was able to note the EMF spike and attempt to converse with them. Very exciting. I think one of their main locations throughout the semester is at New Orleans, but I'm probably too scared for that one.
Apparently, I'm a magnet. It's something I've heard all my life. It's my whole family, really, down from my mother's side. A gaggle of witches, Wiccans, spiritualists, pagans, and, notably, medicine men of two different tribes. So as my Sama would say, my sensitivity is really high. I suppose my first brush with the supernatural happened when I was five years old. And bear in mind, I'm 30 now and this first story is largely anecdotal or hazy at best while I was waiting for the school bus. A couple salient details, the way my childhood home was set up, the road was actually behind the house and our front and only door led to the backyard. We, two older sisters and I, were at the end of the driveway, 20 yards from the back corner and a dozen or so feet from a stand of trees to our left and the dense forest across the street. My mom was inside watching us. Five, six, and seven, we were old enough to wait for the bus alone, or so we insisted. But this day was different. Mom was uneasy right from the start, and that was justified, because as she watched us out the window, something caught her eye. It was a face in the reflection on the glass. Her beloved, departed grandpa mouthing words to her. At first she didn't understand, so he asked him what he was trying to tell her. He frowned, shook his head, and then she heard his words as though he were right beside her. Get them inside now. And no sooner than she did, but a man in a black jacket burst out of the woods, something clutched in his hands. I never did find out what it was, my mom wouldn't let me see. But that was both right around the time my golden retriever disappeared and a heavily drugged and deranged man was arrested a couple of miles away for waving around a bloody knife. So I've got some suspicions. Now you might be thinking, but this happened to your mom, not you. And you're mostly right. Here's what I didn't tell you. Before mom had even worked out what the face in the window was trying to tell her, I was already tugging on my sister's sleeves. I didn't recognize the old man in the buckskin jacket, who stood across the street with his arms spread wide, facing the forest. Of course, I know who he is now. Grandpa never went anywhere without that old leather coat. And that's not the only time something like that happened to me, or my mom, but we'll save that. I suppose I should have mentioned the girl. She's been with me since I was just a little one, pretty much as far back as I can remember. I'd never gotten a good look at her, but... She has long, dark hair and an old-fashioned white dress. She doesn't move or speak, but just stands on the edges of sight, just there in the corner of my eye. If I try to look, she's gone. I don't always see her, and it used to scare me when I did. Not anymore. When I was younger, I took a trip out to a reservation to meet an old friend of the family. Sama insisted. It was her half-uncle my great-great-uncle and a respected medicine man in the tribe. Incidental side note, I'm way more European than Cherokee and that quarter, half, one-sixteenth blood thing is nonsense, so I still don't get why he agreed to see me in any official capacity. Family, perhaps. I don't actually remember much of what happened that day, except I had pancakes at a local diner before we left and that man had the most knowing, piercing eyes I had ever seen. He talked a lot, but I understood very little of it. Mostly he talked to Sama, but at the very end he lowered himself to the floor and looked me in the eye. He called me a little coyote and told me the girl wasn't dangerous, that she was meant to be a guide. He gave me a little bag with some herbs and a rock and warmed me away from places spirits gather. That's something else I've grown up hearing. If I go where the veil is thin, I risk tearing a hole and unleashing something I cannot put back. Told you, a bit superstitious, but I haven't put that to the test just yet. I'll actually stop here for now. There are plenty of other stories. The seance that left a ghost in a painting. The flying Dutchman sighting. More uneasy feelings and near misses than I can count. And the dreams too. But I'll save those for another time. A few months ago, I responded to an Instagram ad for a girl that was new in town and needed someone to watch her dog while she went on a trip. 
I didn't know her well, just that she was extremely spiritual and maintained an Akashic Record practitioner business, though still not quite sure what that certification or business title means, but we've since become friends. It was a great dog-sitting gig. The dog was so intelligent and sweet, and her house, though small and a little out of the way in the countryside, was cozy and relaxing, complete with all of her spiritual supplies, crystals, sage sticks, candles, etc. The backyard had a hammock and string lights and crickets chirping in the evening. It was beautiful. The whole gig was supposed to be a nice getaway for me, but I was wary because I knew the chick dabbled in a lot of spiritual things, and in the back of my mind, I worried what type of energy she might be letting into her space. And there was definitely something spooky about her. When we met at the house to discuss details, she looked overhead suddenly and sighed deeply. I looked up and saw an open-winged hawk gliding closely to us through the pine tree landscape. It was a majestic sight. As we stood there silently, it felt as if we were meant to be there. Not in a romantic sense, but an eerie one. It was as if time stood still. The energy of her house seemed to come alive at night. Each time nightfall came, feelings of unease crept up on me. I pushed these feelings out of my head and attributed the spooky feeling to the fact that there was no TV in the house, so maybe it was just very quiet and I wasn't used to it. I had to be there alone for a week and had a responsibility to be there for this dog. No room to get scared. Towards the end of my stay, I was sitting on the couch one evening and felt something touch my right arm. Just a soft poke in the space between my shoulder and elbow. I looked at my arm, looked behind me and glanced all around the room looking for some logical explanation. I told myself it was a draft from the fan. It wasn't, but again, I didn't want to be scared. I finished my beer and went to bed. In the following weeks, I told the story to my friends and a few of my sisters, but never mentioned it to the lady I was sitting for. Not sure why, I guess I didn't want her to be offended. However, she ended up moving out of that house and back to her home state of Vermont, so I finally decided to reach out and pry a little bit. I asked her if she ever felt anything spooky in the house, and that's it. Keep in mind, I told her nothing of what I had experienced. Here was her response. Yes, uh, especially at night. It would start to feel very eerie and sometimes I would feel a hand on my right shoulder. It used to scare me so bad that I would run to bed and hide under the covers, but then I started to look at it as a hand guiding me through the darkness. Then I told her about my experience about feeling something touch my right arm. She said, yes, I'm quite certain it was the same with a joyful little giggle. This happened a few years ago. I still remember it pretty clearly because it's so strange and I never really found an answer to what it was. I'm not an active user on Reddit either and at this point I figured I would just share my experience and see if anyone had similar stories or an explanation. Maybe just share your thoughts. Like I said, this happened a couple of years ago. It was during a visit to my grandmother in a small village in Mexico. To give some context, my parents and I visited for about a week and during that week, my mother's cousin also passed. He was in a car crash and the local government was deeply involved. Months later, it turns out he was actually targeted by the local cartel there. That really is a whole story in itself, but I decided to mention it because it did happen that same week we were visiting. As you can probably tell, overall that whole week was tragic and also extremely odd. Some background. It happened about a night before we got news about the passing. My uncle lives in the same plot of land my grandmother does and he owns a farm of chickens and roosters. My grandma's sister, the mother of the guy who passed, is technically their next door neighbor. They own the plot of land right next to my grandmother's. My grandmother's plot of land is actually adjacent to the local elementary school there, so her house isn't in the middle of nowhere, however she does have a good sized plot of land that is surrounded by concrete walls for protection. The streets around her land only really gets foot traffic when school is in session. Given the climate at the time, any kind of foot traffic stops by sunset. The village itself is pretty poor and everyone is familiar with each other there. 
They have a few rich but no middle class. Most houses are about equivalent to shacks. My grandmother owns a concrete house that is decently sized but otherwise plain. Now that there's some background, I'll get to the event. It was during the summer when my parents and I visited. I was on summer break and so were the schools there. My parents and I were the only people there visiting my grandmother at the time. Every night, time is taken to be sure all the doors are completely locked before heading to bed. There's three doors that lead to the outside. All are made of metal with also a mesh framed door to keep the bugs out. That night I distinctly remember asking my mom to help me lock the front door. It's a heavy metal door with a secured lock that I was having difficulties closing. We also checked to make sure that the other doors were secured and locked. I'm going to mention the layout of my grandmother's house briefly since it is somewhat important. The first room you enter, which is the door I was having a hard time closing, is basically a room with a bunch of beds. To the right is what is referred to as a middle room, which is just another bedroom. It connects to the first room to my grandmother's room. You can look into the middle room and also see the first room when both doors are left open. These two doors are usually left open because they are heavy and scrape against the concrete floor very loudly. Before heading to bed, I plugged my phone into the middle room to charge, which is where my dad was going to sleep in. My mom and I were sleeping in the same room with my grandmother. My mom and I shared a bed that was right next to the door that leads into the middle room. Right before falling asleep, I could see into the first room because the two doors were left open like always. I had no recollection of any nightmares or dreams. I basically slept in pitch black until I woke up at an unknown time completely terrified. My eyes basically shot open and I had an indescribable sense of fear. The first thing I noticed was that the door next to me was completely shut. I didn't want to move even in the slightest. I didn't really know what to think. I felt too scared to even close my eyes. I just laid there completely still for an unknown amount of time. I came to the conclusion I would rather wait for the sun to come up than close my eyes again. I was that scared. Eventually, I heard the chickens starting to make noise, so I figured the sun was to come up in the next few hours or so. However, I noticed the chickens were actually going crazy, almost as if though they were scared of something. This deepened my fear, but I still laid there, too scared to move. At this point, I was wondering why it hadn't woken up my mother or my grandmother, who were both extremely light sleepers. I was the heavy sleeper in the family, yet the chickens weren't waking either of them up. Eventually, they all settled down and there was no sign of any sunlight. I occupied my time just listening to the air conditioner in the middle room. It's pretty old, the kind that you have to use a hose to water down. It makes a continuous noise and then occasionally sputters, but its noises are almost a routine. I could also hear the bed in the middle room creaking around, which I figured my dad was just moving around in his bed. Again, I couldn't see anyone in the middle room which I found odd that the door was closed. I am a heavy sleeper, so I figured there was a possibility that I remained asleep while the doors were closed. I remained still for who knows how long, but then I heard a noise that I'd never heard before. It was extremely loud, and it came from the middle room. The volume was just as loud as a large bird, but didn't sound anything like a bird. I was petrified and had no idea why it didn't wake anyone up. Again, I can't really describe the noise... It's nothing like I've ever heard before. I still laid completely still, long enough to listen to the noise over and over. I wanted to think it was the air conditioner until that noise happened the same time. I wanted to think it was the creaking of the bed, but eventually that same noise also happened at the same time the bed was creaking, so it couldn't have been either. I also want to mention that I didn't find it odd until later exactly how much the bed was creaking, and at this point I just felt like I was crazy. I still laid completely still, just stuck listening to this noise. Eventually, a second noise started to emerge. It sounded about the same as the first noise, however, it was indistinguishable like when two people speak. It was as if though they were conversing back and forth. I started to move my arm against my mom while whispering, Mom, over and over to try to wake her up. Like I said before, she's an extremely light sleeper, but it looked like she was in a deep sleep. It got to the point I was basically shaking her and moving her around, until finally her eyes shot open and in that moment she actually heard the last noise that came from the middle room. She looked petrified and the first thing she actually said to me was, that noise isn't from this world. After that the noises completely stopped. 
My mom got up and tried to open the door leading into the middle room as slowly as possible, but it still made a lot of noise. The door opening woke up my grandmother. When we got into the middle room, there was nothing in there, and my dad was still completely asleep. I checked the time on my phone, and it was around 3 a.m. Apparently, both doors in the middle room were shut completely. When we started checking around the house, we noticed that all the doors were left open. My grandmother said she opened them during the night, which explains it. Extremely odd she would do something like that, to say the least, but she is pretty old and can be unreasonable. We looked around and checked out the outside, but aside from the doors, nothing was out of place. All we could really do was close them again and go back to bed. The next morning, I woke up to my mom, talking about the event to my uncle and some other family friends who came over to have breakfast. She concluded on her own that it was brujera, or witchcraft. I don't really know what it was. I only ever bring it up when a close friend talks about aliens or any odd occurrences. There have been a few more unexplained events that I may or may not post about. This one, however, was the last odd thing to happen to me, and otherwise my life has been normal since. I posted a story for you guys last night about the strange orange and green glowing lights in my room I saw a few months ago, but I have another unexplained experience for you guys I just remembered. About two months ago, I was up late talking to a friend through Discord. I mentioned how I had to use the restroom and that I'll be right back. I took my headset off and made my way to the upstairs bathroom. I went in, closed the door, and did my business. It was around 1am when all of this happened. As I was finishing up, I heard what sounded like a 70-year-old woman in the living room, disgruntled, like she was angrily in pain, but it was almost inhuman. It was like you stubbed your pinky toe on something and let out the most angry scream you could make. Keep in mind that the only people who live in this house are my parents, my sister, and I, all of which who were asleep at the time. We have pets, but none of them are capable of making the sound. This truly sent chills down my spine, so my first thought was someone had broken into the house and was hiding somewhere upstairs and gave away their position by hurting themselves on accident. I took my phone out and called my father. My parents' room is right next to the bathroom so I could hear his phone ringing. He answered and I whispered to him that I think someone was in the house. He got up and we checked every nook and cranny of the house, while the doors and windows were locked and shut. No one appeared to have came in or out of the house. None of the pets woke up from their sleep either until we started shining flashlights everywhere. Even my dog Maxwell was sound asleep until we noticed we were up. This part is where it gets me the most. When I heard the scream, I texted my friends who were still in the Discord channel, asking them if my mic had picked up the sound. They all said yes, and they all said it sounded like an old woman screaming. The room is in the basement and the scream was located in the living room upstairs. That's how loud it was. To this day, I'm still not sure what it was, but that was truly one of the handful of times I have been startled from the things that have happened in this house. I should mention that I am not religious or spiritual. I am all manners agnostic. I have some beliefs, but at the same time I acknowledge my intellect isn't enough to even begin to comprehend the intricacies of existence. This is why most of the stories here haven't happened to me, but around me. I'll try my best to tell the stories as they were told to me. With that out of the way, here it goes. I used to live with my grandparents, mom, uncle, and twin sister. The house itself isn't particularly old. My grandparents built it almost 30 years ago and it was one of the first houses in the area. Over the years, many things have happened in the house that could be classified as paranormal, but nothing particularly bad, just a bit eerie. So, it might be tied to the old furniture, passed on for generations, others tied to the people living in the house, and some are just random. There's a pretty big cemetery close by. I could see the limits of it from my room and friends think it adds a level of creepy to everything. The first story is one I can't remember happening. My sister and I were a day shy of six months old when our grandfather passed away in a plane accident coming home to meet us. 
My mother was changing our diapers when both my sister and I started giggling and then laughing, looking over my mom's shoulder. She thought it was weird because there was no one in the room with her and we were practically staring at a blank space in the wall, but didn't think much of it. A couple of hours later, she got the call from my dad telling her about the accident. My dad didn't tell her our grandfather was dead because he didn't know yet, but my mom somehow felt he was. She has always been sure that us laughing that day was us laughing at our grandfather, who had followed through with his plan of meeting us, just in a different way. He was later buried in the cemetery close to our house, under a pine tree. Skipping forward many years, my grandparents built a second house next to the original one. The houses are divided by a strip of garden and to go from one to the other you have to walk down a flight of stairs. My room in the big house has a big window and from there I can see the stairs. This one night I heard my mom crossing the garden towards the stairs to go to the small house. She called my name and I answered from my room. I then heard her walk back to the big house. She came into my room and talked to me for a while, I don't remember what about, and then asked if I could walk her to her room, in the small house. I asked her why and she told me that when she called my name from outside, it was because she had seen someone walking down the stairs and thought it was me. I walked her to her room and then back to mine and didn't see anyone. Everyone else had already gone to bed a while ago. That was the first time I escorted my mom to her room and the first time anyone saw Gonzalo. I say the first time because whoever it was, he showed up more than once. My sister was the next person to see Gonzalo. She was on the family computer in the living room when she saw a passing shadow from the window. She turned to see if it was our mom or uncle but saw someone different. He was a he and he was skinnier and taller than our uncle and he was walking down the same stairs. She told my mom and me that night and my mom mentioned the time she saw someone on the stairs and had me walk her to her room. My sister suggested it was the spirit of my grandfather's younger brother, Gonzalo, who had ended his life when he was 18, and that's how he got the name. On my part, Gonzalo became a way to bring down the mood whenever anyone talked about hearing things around the house. If you were hanging out together and they suddenly sat up and asked, did you hear that, or did you see that? I would chuckle and say, it's just Gonzalo, don't worry. I would usually not hear or see whatever they heard or saw, and the few times I did, I assumed it was wood creaking, someone else in the house going about their day or a trick of the light. They usually responded by just getting back to the conversation or the TV computer and staying quiet for a bit, and that would be the end of it. Things stayed like that for some years. Every once in a while, someone would mention seeing Gonzalo walk up or down the stairs, and I would just laugh it off, thinking they had probably seen me, as I am quiet when I walk and usually had headphones in so I couldn't listen when someone was calling my name. The last time I heard a concrete story about Gonzalo was from my mother. She was in her room, on her computer, when someone knocked on her door. She thought it was my uncle, so she said something like, What? or Come in, and the door opened. Some dude peeked in and asked, Have you seen? and then said my uncle's name. She said something along the lines of, No, he's not home. Did he tell you he was going to be here? And the dude just apologized and closed the door. Afterwards, when my uncle got home, my mom scolded him about it. She thought he had given a key of the house to a friend who had rudely come in unannounced. My uncle hadn't given a key to anyone, and no one else in the house had let someone in that night. It was assumed by everyone it had been Gonzalo. I think the first time I said anything about stuff going on in my house to friends, we were all around 13 years old. It started because whenever my friends would come over, they would comment on how my house would be the perfect house for ghosts. Something about the look, the smell, even the area itself, they said. I took advantage of this and my house, creepy happenings and proximity to a cemetery became a great bedtime story that I would tell my friends to mess with them. I didn't believe any of it, so I had no problem going to bed after recalling everything. But with my friends, it was different. The stories matched too close with what they felt, so whenever they came over, they would always be alert. My skepticism remained for the next years. I became the official escort for both my mom and sister. I stopped asking why at some point. I would just walk them places around the house because I knew it would make them feel better. I would even joke around with my mom saying things like, 
Okay, so what if there is something or someone? You're bringing me so it happens to me first? Your kid? What am I to do? Shoo them away? I didn't believe there was anything going on, so it didn't really bother me. But there was a shift some years ago. My sister and I were about 17 last year at school. I remember that because that's the year I threw away my old baseball bat, which will come into play in a bit. It was late at night on a weekend and my grandparents were asleep and my mom had gone out. My uncle was in his room in the small house. I was in my room and my sister was in hers. Something about that night was just weird. I know this is the stereotypical description seen in paranormal shows on TV and so on, but I really have no better way to describe it. Something felt off. It was windier than usual. Windy enough that we could hear it, and this part kills me to write, but the air felt heavy. Something in my chest felt weird, almost like when you fall and there's this feeling of not being able to breathe before you can cry or grunt or react in any other way. Minutes later, my sister came into my room. She was nervous and said she heard someone call her from outside her room. She said it was a weird voice, kind of muffled, but that she had heard her name clearly and it was definitely not the wind. On any other night, I would have just mocked my sister, chalk it up to Gonzalo and just get back to whatever I was doing, but that night was different. I didn't think it was something paranormal. I thought someone had broken in and was walking around figuring out how to get in the house. I wasn't sure how they knew my sister's name, but that story made sense to me more than something paranormal. So I grabbed my baseball bat and wrapped a knife on the bat with duct tape. I know extreme, but teenage me was fueled by action movies and would jump at any chance of being a hero. I told my sister to stay in my room and went around the house with my improvised weapon. I didn't see anyone or anything, so I went in and met my sister in my room. We were both creeped out by the whole thing. She said she felt weird. I told her I did too. The feeling kept rising, so we decided to go to my uncle's room and see if we felt better with him. Maybe it was just the big house, concentrated air or something. I grabbed my bat and we crossed houses through Gonzalo's stairs. We got to my uncle's room and told him what happened. He said he felt weird too, and we all stayed there together. My uncle played his music and we just tried to get our minds off the situation, which we eventually achieved a while later. With all my logic and skepticism, I can't find a reason for why I felt that way that night. I just know I'm glad I haven't felt it again and nothing bad happened. It's just the one time I was actually spooked. Since then, whenever my mom or sister asked me to walk them somewhere, I would do so not to comply with them but because I knew how it felt to be spooked. My walk back to my room was just a bit scary and the shadows I saw around the house made my logic go into hyperdrive. I miss the house, but I definitely don't miss Gonzalo or any of the other weird happenings that would go down. So about a month ago, I was on my way to drop off my cousin. She tells me that there's this haunted house near her area. I knew about this house because she always talked about it. She told me that the friend can see spirits and took her to the house. As they went inside, he pointed out a ghost that was wandering the house. She said she saw a black figure in one of the corners. I was pretty skeptical about this and decided to go to the house. I drove by the house and was like, I'm not going inside. I literally drove by the house with my cousin and took off. This was around 1.30am. The next night I'm in my room watching Netflix and I start hearing scratches and knocks in my walls. I didn't think it was anything serious so I ignored it. The scratches and knocks would continue to occur for about a week from 1am to 3am. A week later I came back from my house at 1am. As soon as I enter my room I hear a ton of scratches and knocks. At this point I got a little scared. That same night I went to the bathroom but when I returned... My blanket was on the floor. I considered that to not be very normal, so I ran to my parents' room to tell them, and they said to listen to some prayers and go to sleep. The next day, everyone went to my sister's house to watch the NFL playoffs. I come back from work, and my room is completely trashed. My fan was on the ground. Everything on my bed was on the other side of my room, 
My clothes were scattered everywhere and I had papers everywhere. I was pretty much at a loss for words. From here on out I slept in my parents' room because something was definitely in my room. What's weird is it was only my brothers and me. Everyone in my family kept saying it's probably because I'm the least spiritual person, whatever that means. So from there I started to do my prayers. Anytime I went to the washroom I would go on Instagram, but every time I did my lights would turn on and off and then I would hear a loud bang on one side of the wall. Seconds later I would hear another loud bang on the other side of the wall. It's not humanly possible for a person to go to one side of the room to bang and then go to the other side of the room. I knew it wasn't my mom because she was downstairs making food and no one else was in the house at the time. After that, anytime I even thought about doing anything in the bathroom, I would get bangs and lights turning off. One time I was in the shower and I would hear loud footsteps coming close. I made sure to lock my door, but my door would open and close multiple times. I legit could not see anyone opening and closing the door. Finally, the door would shut and I would hear a loud bang right next to me. So a week or two goes by and I start doing my prayers. I would hear some scratches and knocks, but it wasn't as frequent. I even had to go to Booster Juice to use their private bathrooms to even get any privacy. I obviously couldn't do it in my house, so desperate times came for desperate measures. And everything starts looking good. For a week, I didn't get anything. A week goes by, and one night while I was sleeping... I turned my head, and there was a doll directly in my face. I freak out. A couple of days goes by, and I'm in the shower again, and this time I hear the same scratches and knocks, but this time I hear knocks coming from my mirror. There was also a day where I was in my room. I wasn't sure when it happened, but there were three big scratches on one of my posters. It was a poster that had a bunch of old school rappers like Tupac, Biggie, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Rakim, etc., Ten minutes later, I heard the loudest scratch. This scratch sounded like someone scratching a blackboard, but louder. And after that scratch, I hear two loud bangs. I'm starting to be worried that this might be a poltergeist related to that house that we stopped by, because it seems as if the poltergeists are only there to mess with you. It's been tough having this thing in my house and taking trips to Booster Juice after I go to the gym, but what else can I do? This is my third post here, and this one is by far the most disturbing. Some of you may see my post about the picture of my deceased father moving from my closet to the top of my bookshelf, and this might have something to do with it. I'm looking for advice or insight or anything that might help. My family and I moved to Spring, Texas around late July, early August. I remember the day we got here. I had the worst vibe from this house, but... It was the only one that was a perfect size and in our price range. Side note, the people who live in my house are as follows. My mother, 54, my younger brother, 14, myself, 16, my oldest sister, 29, my little niece, 3, and my little nephew, 5. We also have 4 cats and a dog. The night we finally got bed set up in all the rooms, I was exhausted. I guess moving couches and dressers does that to you. But as soon as I had lined down on my bed... I was overcome with the worst chest pain I had ever felt. It was my lower ribs area and it felt like something was inside my ribs and pulling them inward. I couldn't breathe. I was vomiting, sweating, trembling. And this was around 2am. I felt awful for doing so but I woke my mom and explained in a brief, breathless, frantic manner what happened so she took me to the hospital. I've always been known for having good health. I get checkups regularly, I keep good hygiene, I don't have allergies. When we arrived at the hospital, they did everything from blood work to CAT scans, x-rays, pee in a cup, etc. They found nothing wrong. I tried to tell them this wasn't normal and my mother also explained that I've always had generally good health. The only thing I ever suffered from was bad acid reflux, but I take over the counter meds for it. The hospital said it was probably just acid reflux or maybe anxiety from moving, but... I know what heartburn feels like and having an anxiety attack, so that wasn't it. 
I've been diagnosed with PTSD, general anxiety disorder, BPD, major depression, and whatnot due to past traumas. I know what my anxiety feels like and it's never been something like that. The hospital just gave me a painkiller and then sent me home. I was terrified because I've never felt something like that before. A few weeks later, we're all finally settled in for the most part. The kitchen is always pretty lively, my mom cooking and listening to music, being a dorky mom, etc. My sister playing in the living room with her kids. Despite having a rocky past, my family has always stayed very positive and warm and welcoming. I use rain sounds to help me fall asleep because of my PTSD. It's always done the trick and the white noise in a way makes my nightmare stop. It's worked for over three years. Lately though, the nightmares started again and have gotten so much worse and way more vivid than the ones I used to have. I get the nightmares once a week nowadays. When I don't have nightmares, sometimes I wake up to the sounds of my niece and or nephew screaming bloody murder. It breaks my heart because they don't have a father figure so I always run to my sister's room and help her calm them down. Each time one of them will be sobbing on my shoulder, talking about a man watching them and how they want to keep the closet light on because that's where he hides. Other times, I wake up to tapping or the sounds of things being moved around in my pantry. The opposite side of my closet wall is the pantry. It's always at odd hours of the night and I would know if someone was awake. I even ask my family if they were up and moving around at whatever time and in the pantry, and each time they say no. The tapping usually sounds like it's coming from a part of my wall next to my window from inside or from the outside of the window and it's always in intervals of three. A few times now I've woken up to the feeling of someone or something hitting and shoving me. The first time, I was half asleep and laying on my side and jolted awake to the feeling of a cold hand being shoved into my lower back. Each time it will be a cold hand hitting my shoulder, my back, etc. I usually find things misplaced, mainly sentimental objects like jewelry, pictures, old school yearbooks, etc. This is really out of order. I know, but this is just covering the basics. I truly appreciate any help, advice, or tips. It's only gotten worse these past few days. About a year and a half ago, a good friend of mine moved back home from out of state. He had made it to a large casino that's just outside of town, but... He didn't have a ride the rest of the way and it was late, so my mom and I went to get him. We decided to take the long way there. It was an unusually clear night and being in town, we don't get many opportunities to see the stars. We were driving along with the windows down listening to music. The section of the road we were on had a hill about every half mile or so. As the road plateaued, we could see something in the air ahead of us. At first we thought it was a helicopter because it was hovering. As we got closer, I turned the music off and realized that whatever it was, it wasn't making any noise at all. My mom slowed to a crawl and stopped when we were directly beneath it. With only about ten feet above us, still no sound. Of course we were curious, so she stuck her head out the window to look up at it while I leaned over the dashboard and looked through the windshield. It looked vaguely helicopter or teardrop shape with one end being much thicker than the other, but it didn't taper as narrowly as a helicopter, and instead of the blades on top of the aircraft, it had wings like a plane, but they seemed too short to actually be functional. We saw a flash in the rearview mirror and looked back to see a car cresting a hill about a mile behind us, and when we looked up, the craft was gone. We continued on our way and picked up my friend, talking his ear off about it all the way home. You can bet we took the same way home hoping to get a second look and validation from a third party but to no avail. The next morning I got up and went to the bathroom and caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror. I'm not even kidding. The side of my face that I had turned up to look at the craft was sunburned. I ran to my mom's rooms to see her face and sure enough she was sunburned too. We had spent the entire day indoors, so there was no possibility of it being from just being out in the sun. I 
I wish we could have gotten a second look at it, and I wonder if the car behind us had seen anything as well. So I have a pretty weirdly set up house. So the right of our house we have no neighbors in a very big open empty field that stops at a busy road and across the road is a park. My mom and I live there and our house is pretty small but just the right size for us. The kitchen door is less of a door and more of an opening, living room and dining room connected, super creepy unfinished basement with an unlocked attic door above the stairs. My room has always felt safe. My mom's room, however, always feels cold and uninviting. When I stay home, only when I'm there alone, weird things happen. Although my best friend has said that she has felt some things in my house, heard noises, eerie presence, cold spots, being watched, being touched, I had never been physically interacted with, but every time I go down the stairs, I feel an overwhelming sense of dread and the intense feeling of being watched. I usually end up feeling that way right as I pass the attic door, which is important for this. So about six months back I started hearing what sounded like rodents in the attic, which very well could be the case, except the distinct sounds of small shoes. So unless the rodents take tap lessons, something is up there. One day I'm staying home alone, it's around 10pm, I started hearing a rolling sound from the corner of my room. The ceiling, the attic floor... It was the sound of a ball being rolled hard enough to bounce off the wall and go back to whatever was rolling it. Well, I wanted to be sure I wasn't going crazy and went to the ceiling and knocked on it. I was shaking because my house has never really felt safe, but I was never convinced there were ghosts. Whatever was up there responded with the same number of knocks I used and at the same speed. To say I almost peed myself is an understatement. One time prior to that, when my best friend was over, she said she saw a shadow in my closet. I have a small shelf above my closet rod. She said she saw the shadow of a little boy in there. Just last night is the most recent eerie situation. I was waiting for my best friend to come get me after work. I was in my room which has two windows, one to the big field and one to the unfenced backyard. The basement stairs are right behind my head and the back door is right in front of the top stair. So I'm in silence, finding a YouTube video to watch on my TV when I hear clear humming from a female voice. Of course, I held my breath and listened. I then heard what sounded like someone pushing against the back door. I ran to my window and looked. Nothing. It wasn't coming from inside. A little bit later the same thing at the front door, and still, nothing. Am I being haunted? Is my house just old, or am I going crazy? Any advice or comments would be highly appreciated in this situation. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.